For this video, I'll be walking you through some concepts of loading indicators, how to build some common ones you can find out there, best practice on when to use which, and some CSS animation tips. Support the channel by liking or commenting on this video, subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's dive in. I have here a simple style for the body to send things vertically and horizontally with display flex and as usual I box size border box everything. For the first loading indicator we have the famous spinner which for this example is a simple div of glass spinner. I'll make it 25 by 25 circle with border radius 50%, give it a gray border so we can see it and what I want is for one of the sides of the circle to be a different color. So I'll set border right of a super dark gray color. Now all I need is for it to spin. For that, I'll create a keyframe for animation. I'll call spin. I can use the two to indicate to which state I want my spinner to spin to. I can also use 100%, which means the same thing. For this, I want it to spin to 360 degree, which is one turn. To use this animation, I'll add the property of animation. I'll use the shorthand version of it. I'll specify the name of the keyframe to use, in this case, spin, then the duration, then the easing function to use, and I'll make this spin infinitely with infinite iteration count. Like that, we have our simple spinner. I can also specify turns instead of degree, which can be much better if you don't want to count degrees. As you can see, spinners are all about spinning some image or specific element. So when to use spinners? Spinners are great when you don't know how long something will take, but it should not be used for things that take a long time. On the internet, more than 3 or 5 seconds are perceived to be eternity. You can use spinners inside other elements like buttons and overlay. As a user, if you are presented with a screen where all you see is something spinning, it may piss you off if it takes too long. I'll show you an alternative in this video, so let's continue. So if you know how long or can measure the time something is taking, you should use the loading progress bar. For this, I'll use the progress tag, but you can use a custom div, which is something I used in the video about how to create a resumable multi-file uploader, link below. A loading bar and a progress bar are normally used interchangeably, but it is all about providing a visual representation of a progress of something. The progress tag makes it easier since you can define the max value and the current value you can also specify the minimum as well. If you don't specify the value, the browser may show something like this, a bouncing left to right animation. This is equivalent of a spinner since bouncing is not a measurement of progress. The issue with progress bar is that each browser style it differently and you want to present the user with the same visual regardless of the browser. In order to remove the browser style, you must remove the appearance. There are different prefixes for different browsers as well. I'll make it 8 pixels tall, round the corner by 5 pixels, but I need to set the overflow hidden in order to see the curved corners. To style the background, I need to target the pseudo element of progress bar which also has different browser prefixes and I'll make it light gray. There's also a progress value which is the bar that fills, again, different browsers prefixes for it and I'll make it dark gray. Just to show you the browser prefixes, here is a Mozilla version and one thing about pseudo elements is that you cannot group them with comma, they won't work that way. In order to simulate the bar filling, I'll create a simple function called load, which takes a percentage, which I'll use to set the value of the bar. Then if the percentage is still less than 100%, I'll call the request animation frame to simulate pass of time, which I pass the function that calls our load function incrementing it the percentage by 0.5. Else I'll have a set timeout to restart the loading after it is done with a 1.5 second wait. Now if I call the load function, we can see the bar filling and when it's complete, it wait 1.5 seconds and start again. Note that the reason I use request animation frame was not for animation purposes. It simply calls the function at the rate of a screen refreshing rate, which is usually 60 frames per second, which is then followed by a browser repaint. You usually see loading bars on top of the view to indicate page transition loading, side loading progress, or side loading overlay before the content is revealed. You can use it when you don't know how long something may take as well. Like for example, you can fake loading for something that 
does not take long to progress in order to give the users the sense that something is happening. You can use fake loaders to improve experience because users tend to feel weird when they done something that they believe should take some time and happen instantly. If you tell users that the site is processing files and immediately show the file processed, they may become skeptical. So this is a good solution in that case. For the next loading indicator, we have the bouncing dots. Also a very popular loading indicator, which is used to represent some type of wait, like wait for the next page of the list, wait for some API response, etc. It is also used to indicate some ongoing thing, like if someone is typing in a chat box, for example. You don't necessarily need to add span tags for each dot. This can be accomplished with box shadow or pseudo elements as well. I am going to use the span tags to represent each dot to make it easier to show animation for you. Each dot will be 15 by 15 with light gray background, display inline blocks so width and height can have effect, and I'll round it up with border radius of 50%. To distance apart nicely, I'll set margin left and right of 5 and create our keyframe for animation I'll call jump. So when the animation starts, the ball must be in place, so translate of 0. At half point or 50%, it need to be up 15 pixels, then at 100% point, it get back to the ground at 0 translation. Because the 0 and 100% mark are the same, I can group them comma separated. Now I'll proceed to set the animation and I'll make take one second infinitely as well. I forgot to specify the Y axis to translate at. Right now they all jump together and if I want for them to jump and wait a little and jump again, I can set a different middle point like 25%. So now the jump seems to go to 50%. So it is down at 0%, then it moves up at 25%, then comes down at 50% and stays down until 100% point. To make them bounce, I need to add a different delay to each dot. So I use the nth of type to target the second dot to give it a delay of 0.15 seconds. For the third dot, I'll give it a times 2 of the delay, so 0.3 seconds. And for the fourth dot, I'll give it a times 3 of the delay, so 0.45 seconds. Now that they are all bouncing at a different delay time, I can add that weight at the end. I can also adjust the delay to see the difference and continue to play so it provides the right level of urgency for the job. Make sure to experiment and provide the right feeling always for this kind of animation. Loading dots are not ideal for progress that take a long time as well, but they can be used for something that takes a little longer than a spinner is used for. There is a type of loading indicator that varies a lot in how it is implemented but is the best loading indicator for, for view loading. It is called skeleton loader, which is meant to simulate what the layout will be when it finished loading. You should prefer this instead of spinners and bouncing dots to indicate that something is loading for the layout to render. I'll be simulating a phone in this case, so I'll make it 320 by 600 with light gray background. You can simulate a whole view or individual components or sections of the view as well. Instead of a color for the background, I'll use a linear gradient with two color stops, but the same color, same light gray. I'll add an additional linear gradient with a darker gray on top zero, left zero position, 100% width and 50 pixels high, no repeat. That will simulate the top bar or the menu of the view. Notice that the order of these linear gradients matter. The ones you specify first will appear on top and that's why the dark gray top bar appears on top of the light gray background. I'll add an, a radial gradient next to simulate an avatar which is a circle of 25 pixels radius, gray and transparent color stops. I'll position it 25 left, 25 from the top and make it 50 by 50 since the radius is 25. To show you what is this transparent for, I'll make it red instead and we can see that it is a red square with a gray circle. I can also make it 100% and if I don't specify the percentage, it will fade from gray to red from the center. So I'll make it 100% and transparent so it does not fade. I'll continue with this gray boxes but just changing the position and the size of them all until I get the layout. There is also a repeating linear gradient which can come handy in avoiding repetition but I'll leave that for another video so make sure you are subscribed to the channel for that. Now we have a skeleton of the view and what I'll do is add a vertical linear gradient with three color stops. The color in between the transparent must match the background color. I'll make it red so we see it better and adjust its width. 
if I make a negative 150, it goes out of the view to the left. And to make it go out of the view to the right, I'll make it 100% plus 150 pixels. The 150 pixels here is the same size of its width. For the animation, I'll name the keyframe skeleton load. And at 100%, I'll update the background position. And I'll have to repeat all this gradient position here. And the only one I want to change with the animation is the top one to 100% plus 150. Everything else I'll copy to be the same. Now I'll use it in defining the animation. We see that the bar going left to right. I can also make it alternate so it comes back. There are many ways to animate a skeleton load. I've seen ones that change the opacity of the skeleton to make it fade away and come back. Diagonal bars moving up and down or left to right. I've seen color change as well, and it doesn't stop there. There are different ways to express these loaders, so it will depend on the project and the effect you think works best for you. For the final loading indicator, it is a simple one, actually. It is an overlay loading indicator, which is used to block users from interacting with the page while you finish processing or loading something. I'll keep the mobile layout and use the spinner inside the overlay loader, another good use case for spinners. I'll add a loading text along with it and you can say anything to explain to the user what's going on if necessary. You don't have to include any text if you don't want to. To style it, I'll absolute position it with width and height of 100% so it fills the container where you put it. I'll give it a dark and opaque background. Again, you don't have to give it a background, but it's a good one to indicate that there's something on top of the screen to make it kind of fade away. Display flex it and align things vertically and horizontally. Also change direction to column so the text appears under the spinner. Next, I'll make the text less dark and give it top margin. And that's all you need. Like that, we have an overlay loading indicator. Let me know what you think in the comments or like this video to support the channel. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you the next one. Bye-bye.